Welcome to the Bizarre Briefing for August. August. August 2015. I'm Bryce Castillo. That was Brant Hughes, and we've Hi. got John Tilton. Yo. Yo. Uh, this is the show where we, the non uh, Brian Brushwoods of Bizarre Magic, talk mm. about the goings on of Bizarre Magic and other things. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, what, what's going on, guys? Oh, you know, just hanging out. <laughs> it's just a chill week, you yeah, know. Yeah, just chilling out. Relaxing all cool. Yeah. <laughs> how, how about you, John? How are you, John? Because I'm doing well. the disconnect sometimes from, like, not seeing each other very much, uh, I don't know if you're having the ridiculous weeks that we've had. It depends. I think you guys have more consistent ridiculous weeks, whereas... Um, if uh, if the store is doing really well, mm -hmm. I'll, it stuff will get really crazy for me. Mm -hmm. But then there's other weeks where the store doesn't do as well, and then I'll spend that time uh, trying to research ways to make the store do better in the future. So mm -hmm. so and those are a little more relaxed, but yeah. it uh, it just depends. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've got uh, a big week coming up uh apparently it's labor day weekend and so everybody is doing things oh yeah so we've got oh. uh dragon con yeah that's a thing uh, we've got justin's wedding on saturday and then the live night attack on sunday uh brian is doing texas association of magicians on friday it's true uh and because people are coming to go see him like specifically at texas association mm -hmm. uh we're gonna do a scam school shoot hopefully on thursday uh okay we uh, should send out an email about that i i haven't because i haven't confirmed the location yet okay uh but everybody who <laughs> it would need to know i just learned about this heard. in the past hour too brant so. okay. okay wait so at least i didn't learn fuck. on the show fuck <laughs> yeah uh and also uh, any shoot stand-ups at some point in time during this week would be ideal and unless we're gonna shoot stand-ups like the second that everybody gets back from Dragon Con, uh, I mean, I feel like that's probably gonna happen. We okay, yeah, we need to shoot stand-ups. We also need to shoot a behind the scam sometime this week. Sure. Uh, not to mention we can, we have all the stuff to do the behind the scam as soon as Brian gets back in, so we could do that tomorrow. Okay. Again, so I, I how, how much of the show should be us <laughs> doing? This is, we can't do our work unless we're all in the same place planning it live yeah. streaming. <laughs> and it's like, then we're actually pretty efficient at it. So yeah. um, here's something that I noticed. Brian's car is not at the home. Yes, that's because he's exactly. uh, shooting. It's um, he's, oh, he's staying in L.A. to do uh, not frame rate um, cord killers. Cord killers. Yeah, I saw that he was he was at Tom's hey. house. We were he very. That's how it. we felt. Our, well, that's how no, Brant felt when he right. didn't know we're shooting yeah. scam school. You're right. <laughs> you should check Twitter, Bryce. I saw he was in L.A. and I just thought he had another fucking crazy layover. <laughs> no, well he would have. He would have, but he's staying to uh, so they can Dude. record in the same spot. So. Also, welcome to I Bizarre know, Magic, Bryce. I don't know yeah. how that affects you, but uh, uh, I guess it. That's the does latest. It actually just makes everything a little bit easier, but. I feel like that's, hey, I'm going to be in L.A. We need a, uh, we, we need, need to hire a, uh, we need a program that connects all of us. No, we, no, we need a person who, uh, who calls us every day during a time that we like and tells us what's going on with so everything. So 4 a.m. <laughs> that's what we actually need. <laughs> well, um, and Brian has been floating around the idea of, uh, he's called it office hours, but basically getting an, a part-time assistant or someone who can go through his emails and like, yeah, let us know when some of this stuff happens. Uh, but I think he is a, all the things that could happen are, are not happening because he's busy, but also, uh, hmm. I, I feel like this, this all kind of ties into our third topic. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Which is Slack. Brian finally joined the Slack, and he's actually using it somewhat now. It's true. You mean our fifth? Uh, it's our fifth topic. Yeah, whatever. I thought it's I thought, on there. Yeah, okay, it is on here. Yeah, yeah. Brian's in Slack now. Yeah, he, he, was, he, he doesn't use it for everything, but no. he uses it a lot more than he used to, which was none. 
No, so and great. he even told me when I got off the phone with him like an hour ago, he was like, I'm going to put all this on the Slack. I don't know if he will, but he had the intention <laughs> to do it too. So that's really good. His heart's in but, the right place, sort of. Well, <laughs> and well, he this, told me, it, well, this I, is the thing too, is, mm-hmm. is that, um, uh, for, and, and this is why, you know, cause I guess it used to be my job and then probably Brant's job. I don't think Bryce ever had this part of the job where it was like, there was that personal assistant aspect of the job. Mm-hmm. But now that we've grown so much in other areas, that part is like completely missing because no one has time to do it. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and, and some, some ways I think that's the part of the job that Brian can kind of benefit from the most. Uh, is someone so to like, keep an eye yeah, on Yeah, but it's all like stuff. we literally don't have the personal assistant thing filled right now. So that mm. I think that's kind of why everything has is crazy, I think. and oh, But hopefully we're in a spot where we can hire someone to do that soon. Fingers um, crossed. But because yeah. uh, and then the word will go out again for people to be hired. And then oh, you yeah. can be on the show. And then we could. Well, that's we a could that's ber- a big promise. <laughs> Hold on. We could berate them and make fun of them on Night Attack, yeah. as per <laughs> tradition. Yes. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have that phase on Night Attack. I think. Hmm. Yeah. See, that now is the good time to start working because you don't Ooh. go through. You don't go through the same, uh, like, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, mm, ritual initiation. Initiation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that hazing process of just like. You know, and you wouldn't have to yeah. do all of the the touring stuff nearly as much. Correct. Which I didn't like very much. Mm. I mean, everybody's different, but yeah. I wonder if it, I we should talk. We should. You know who we should have on this show is is like um, Chad or uh, mm. or Dan Kunath or um, what's his name Mike. I can't remember mm. his last name. Previous. Previous Brian employees people and see yeah. like because mm. uh yeah i was never a big fan of the on the road stuff either but but there it was um it was definitely like a big learning experience in terms of like uh like i think it, it was like a, almost like a trial by fire kind of thing where you got used to and not necessarily the um most of the skill set that's needed for making the show run properly, but like that whole understanding, Brian understanding how everything works, mm-hmm. like that was kind of all like the best way to learn that quickly is like a month of doing the stage show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like I feel like I feel like the 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 use of the use of Slack is a r- real important first step. Because uh, yeah. we still we still have a long way to go on communication. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's. It was, I didn't really know about his Malaysia trip until like the day before he left for Malaysia. Yeah, and that's like and okay, that's weird. That yeah, <laughs> maybe I have to reschedule some things. <laughs> I only found out because I have his calendar, and on his calendar it said Malaysia question <laughs> mark. Uh, it was funny hearing you talk about. Well, it was Malaysia question mark for a long time because of the and passport. That, yeah, well, it, yeah, because I think it was pretty much as soon as he figured out. I guess he could go. He said yes, and then did it, and it was like days late. Like it, mm-hmm. like uh, yeah, that that's something that was not. It came out it, like it came upon yeah. happening very quickly. But also, like, I might be going to Malaysia. Like that's what you could say. And the weird thing is, is this is not the first time this has happened. Um, and I'm not talking about Malaysia specifically, but like not long ago he went to Florida, and I didn't know he was going to Florida until I saw a tweet of, "Hey, I'm in Florida. Check out my stage show." Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm not supposed to be there, am I? <laughs> right. Um, we should we should add the because um, that's what he always says too is we should add the Google Calendar to. Um, to I don't. Do you, what, I don't. Can you add it to Slack? That would be awesome if you could add it to Slack. I, I mean, Slack there, there, there's a lot of Slack integration tools. I don't know if they have at, one specifically for that. We should that. look if there's a Google Calendar one because I know he does use that. I don't use Google Calendar at all, which is right. why it's kind of funky. Well, but, so like I have a separate app on my a separate calendar app for my phone that I just use for Brian's schedule and like the DCTV schedule. Hmm. Yeah. So that's away from my own calendar. 
Um, See, well, it, and I was like totally calendar based, like in college and all that stuff. But I think I think working for Brian, I I kind of like out of necessity. Now I just kind of I, I do roll with the punches more. But I I understand that that your guys is kind of what you need to do on a day to day. Day well, basis is probably more reliant than what I do well, on and, Brian being around. Yeah, because like with the Malaysia thing, that pushed up having to do behind the scam, uh, yeah. or, or or you know, uh, uh, was it was there other stuff? I think behind the scam was the one thing we pushed up, uh, and that got done like the day he left or something. Yeah, right? yeah, and he did that an hour before he left. I I remember I was in here, which was actually probably pretty good because then we got everything to Brant faster than normal. Yeah, mm-hmm. it wasn't terrible. Uh, although I wasn't, I wasn't able to be there, which was. Yeah. But uh, also, I feel like a lot of a lot of things that you need from Brian are like decision making yeah. and like talking out things. Whereas Bryce and I, we need his face. We need yeah, his yeah. voice. <laughs> he needs to be here in person. We should invest everything. in that. Uh, uh, the the little robots that drive around, so that way he could just have his <laughs> face here, and we could record the robot. That would be great. That too. That would, but yeah. I was thinking like the, um, uh, you know, like the uh, CG that they're using to make like Arnold Schwarzenegger young and stuff. Oh, right. Oh, Where yeah. You can we just like just... basically like take, you know, Brian's face. License CG, the rights to his likeness. And, and then yeah. just get someone kind of with the same, like a body double. And then okay. just have him be there and then the rigging, put his right. face on. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then we'll use all the hours of, you of just dub podcast over that. footage. Yeah. And we, we, we oh, that, yeah. Because Brian already has so many he hours. He said every word. Yeah. So then you just yeah. put in and, and then, then we make a just, soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just reads it off. Basically, yeah. we could use the same technology that I used during that Obama ad. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just Brian's face. Exactly. Well, that's the type of thing where we could probably actually get away with that once. <laughs> but then it's like, well, you can't do that same joke. So mm. we have to save it for a true emergency. When we need it. Right, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then just one time. So when you guys see that episode yeah. in the next You year, know we had a real you shit know, week. Right? It was yeah. a bad week. <laughs> But I, I also thought it was I thought it was pretty funny when uh, when Brian joined Slack and he was like, "Okay, I'm here," and then he didn't join any of the channels for like a month, <laughs> right? And, and so everything everything was in the general channel, general is, or DM kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, and which then was funny. And I was like, "Brian, get get in here! Right. Like this this you belongs in over the right in the channel." Yeah, and he was like, "Oh, I thought I thought it auto joined," um, <laughs> which was oh fun. Brian. Uh, yeah, um, but uh, it was it was funny hearing you talk about uh, the phone call with Brian, where he's like, "I'll put all this in Slack," because he definitely told me that the other night when we were talking about the scam school shoot on Thursday. Oh, did he put it in? Thurs- though? No, he didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, so the intentions are there, but the follow through isn't yet. See, that's again where. It well, and be- it, it, if it was just the scam school thing, that's a neat that that could have just been like you know I. I was gonna wait for Handlebar to confirm with us, but like, yeah, like that's that would have been easy. But there was other stuff that we talked about that is like longer term things that it would have been great for him to put in his own words, so I don't misrepresent it, and you know he can continue to work ideas out. Uh, yeah, because the way that the way that Brian communicates a lot of things, it's like he gets an idea and he has to say something and he has to like work through his ideas through speaking to people. Yeah, um, yeah. and. Which is exactly how that conversation was. Yeah. And well, I wonder if there's like a Slack thing where you can send like, can you send audio bites or stuff? Like, what's I'm that? I'm sure there's uh, probably. You can, you can upload. I mean, you could definitely, yeah, record a, a sound file and then just send the sound file to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's de- it's a learning process, I think. Yeah. Especially since I'm like completely the exact opposite. Like. I sit on an idea for five months while I develop it, and then eventually I yeah, give yeah. like a structured mm-hmm. demonstration. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're working on it. Working on it. Uh, so last month, uh, uh, we uh, I, we were days away. This is funny. It's funny that you're actually watching a rerun right now, because uh, we were days away from me flying out. For a convention, mm-hmm. we had a scam school shoot on the same week, uh, and uh, the Brian wasn't here. John, you're here, so you make this not a rerun. Uh, but nice. 
Uh, That's nerd- why I wasn't here last time. I foresaw this. <laughs> I was like, you guys are going to have the same boring episode. You need a new take <laughs> next month. Uh, so, so Nerdtacular happened, and that was great. Like, yeah. uh, you, you were a bit nervous going into that. I was a little nervous, um, but it ended up being like totally chill. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also, that doesn't not make me nervous for Dragon Con, uh, which is like a, the next level of pressure because yeah. uh, there's Night Attack and then uh, I'm also doing filming for Justin's wedding. Right. Uh, it's a good thing that the that the cons you, come in this order because if you had been slammed with Dragon Con first mm-hmm. and then oh, I would have quit. Yeah, yeah, I would have just quit. I wouldn't be There's no point. ramping, just <laughs> zero to 60. And Brent, are you FC. also going to... Okay, Dragon I did not Con? think so. No, I'm not. I just want to make sure. Would have been nice, but no. But then I'd have to like buy a plane ticket, and I'd have to, or I'd have to like get a ride with somebody. Oh, because Brian, Bryce, are you on the? Uh, I'm on the companion, companion pass. pass. Got it. Brian so that's why. Used yeah, points. Brian would have paid you. Probably. Brian would have paid. The, but then also, like, I'd have to find a place to stay, and then I'd have to deal with all the us. people, and then I'd well, have to. Yeah, uh, no. The, well, that's that's the only real bummer is is you wouldn't have to. If you don't want to go, you don't want to go, and that's cool. But. Yeah. You wouldn't have to pay for a place to stay, but you would probably have to be piled up in a room with 20 other people. That's yeah. that's the only in which I know from your personality type that that is not appealing to you. Right. Because I know that I have some of that in me, but not to the extent you do, and that is not appealing to me. Right. <laughs> so for you, it must be like... You know, walking on a yeah. I, was I mean, gonna say walking on a bed of nails, but then I was like, well, we already also we know that that's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I usually spend like sixty to seventy five percent of cons in the room, basically. Yeah. Uh, but I, the only reason I would go would be to hang out with Rob Crackle and Curly and April and just like some of Chat Realm. Yeah. And that's, I, I that that's it. But Dragon that, cons are. I, I miss going, but it's it's uh, there's so much going on with the store that I can't really justify going. But then on top of that, it, there was like that weird like half of it was like the best thing ever, and then the other half was like all oh, the hardest work of the year was <laughs> always Dragon Con. Um, yeah. Although it would be nice to go to one of the cons and not have to worry about doing the stage show, because mm. all the cons I've been to, I've uh, had to yeah, do the yeah. stage show as well. Oh yeah, and so that always kind of dragged it down. Just well, that's a usually bit. why we can get into the con in the first place, though. Mm. So it kind of comes along with it. Yeah. yeah. Actually, this would have been great because like you, there's no stage show for Dragon Con, mm-hmm. and just the reason for going was you would have just been holding a camera for. An Wait, hour. this Dragon Con? Yeah, there is a stage show. Boom. Ooh. <laughs> Bow. <laughs> Got him. Another thing you find out on the show. <laughs> is there? I well, okay, no. Uh, again, not. This is just based on what Brian told me an hour ago, <laughs> there, because he said he needed books for after the stage show, and he there's didn't a stage say, show on Friday for T A O M. Yes, that maybe maybe that's what I he think meant. That's what he, there, there's no time for him to do a stage show at Dragon Con. Well, then maybe Never maybe I'm ever, wrong. Guys. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh yeah. I bet someone in chat actually knows for real because it's it, it it's would be on the Dragon Con schedule. It would be, and it's. I don't think it is. I I think he was talking about. Well, then fake stuff. out. I just wanted to see. Oh, you yeah, sweat. He me out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a good place to check that would be the Diamond Club subreddit, where there is a Dragon Con mega thread where they keep all of the there schedule stuff. Right. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking back to is like that. I didn't see that on there. In fact, it don't. I know it listed. Uh, the scam oh, there it all is. There's a scam school shoot, uh, and then which? How is that gonna work? Wait, yeah. How is the scam school? Or, shoot I'm sorry, it's not scam school it's... shoot. It's uh, it's called Scam School Live. Is his show? Uh, at what is that? T-A-O-N. Is that? Oh, but that's no in knows. Austin. But it's okay. listed. That's in no, it's in Austin. Uh, that's why I was confused. This is a stage show that Brian has. Wrong. So here, here's last time I checked before he uh, pre dis, pre knowing what this show was uh, was that he would he you know there are other magicians in town so he was gonna tap scam school regulars and everybody would do a little set and then it would be a fun cash thing okay and call it scam school live yeah he must have meant that Friday show then as yeah. the stage show. 
you know, we should just change the name of the show to what the hell is going on. <laughs> What's going on? What's Bizarre going magic on? tries to figure what out what's know, happening. What do you know, Bryce? <laughs> right? What do you know, Bryce? <laughs> yep. And then maybe by the end we'll know 15%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man. Well, uh, but yeah, you you liked you liked uh, uh, Nertacular. You're was, kind of excited, but a little bit nervous for DragonCon. Yeah, I'm 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 not nervous about Night Attack. That'll be a piece of cake. Okay. Um, uh, I am worried for the. I, I'm mainly worried for Justin's wedding because we're flying in Saturday morning, mm. and it is that afternoon. And yeah. I think their rehearsal. They were trying to do the rehearsal on Friday, so I won't be there. But um, gotcha. Zach is going to be doing the other cam op, so cool. he might be there early enough to go to it. But also, the blocking is supposed to be really easy. So, hmm. yeah, Just, I mean, it's playing it by ear, and uh, you know, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, that's that's how most of most of scam school shoots are, though. Kind of yeah. like we just sometimes that should we'll, that should be our first interview question for people who want to work with. How good are you? You know, playing it by ear. Yeah. yeah. Are you, you good like at improvisation? It by ear? <laughs> oh, that's what yeah. we should hire improv artists. There you go. Y- yeah. Well, yeah. you'd be yes anding. At least they the would camera. have something funny to say anytime something went horribly wrong. Yeah. There you go. They're good at a uh, at disaster recovery. <laughs> um, speaking of of um, updates and topical things, I think people want to update, um, and. Last I heard is something that I know Brian hasn't talked about publicly. Hot exclusive. Exclusive. Oh, wait, wait. At you. A puppy Exclusives. update? Pup date. Oh, I have that. We're moving in tomorrow. What? It's what? <laughs> what the fuck? What All the right. fuck? Yep. <laughs> great. Great. It's uh, actually, it, that's oh, This show is great, guys. True. This show is great. <laughs> Love it. That's not, that's not 100% true. <laughs> we need to do this every week. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, we really should have the frequency <laughs> so we know what's going on from week to week. <laughs> okay, well, tell me about this. Well, okay, so my my pup date information is on the studio. Yours is probably on the scam stuff space. Oh, yeah. Our, we have different puppies. We have different puppies. But Wait, different what? Puppies. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, just John, do your thing first, because if you're moving in tomorrow, yet yeah, that's almost okay. certainly happening. There's right? a okay. There's a puppy update that we should not talk about, <laughs> right? With your stuff, yes. I I I have heard information <laughs> that I can tell you after this. Yes. Okay. Oh, Grant good. doesn't know about that one at all. Nope. Which is funny. Okay. Also, my hand going to the screen. Uh, <laughs> my hand tiny, gets a little. Tiny. Tiny. <laughs> the, screen. the audio people love this. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. The so twists the, and turns in this episode are insane. The scam, the the stuff, scam stuff update is that we agreed with um, uh, someone who lives in, in Brian's neighborhood owns a maid service. And uh, I don't know how much people know about this, so I'll just recap it. Basically general. none. Yeah. So so basically, um, we're we're going in on this space. It's it's um, it's actually a little as a shared space, a little small for us, but as a normal space too big for uh, this uh, this person, Brian, the brush would know. And um, so we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna share that space and we're getting really good uh, rain on it for that reason. And when we grow out of it, um, we're welcome to leave without committing to, you know, a certain time frame. So it's actually really perfect for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that will allow us to uh, do assembly. Um, it'll give us a space that's not Brian's house to, you know, do uh, work in a quiet environment, that kind of thing. It's got AC, so, right? Yeah, it has so. AC in, uh, there's kind of three compartments. Uh, okay. t- there's like a garage area, um, a kind of big open area. Uh, the garage area does not have AC, the big mm. open area does. And then there's a smaller room that um, that also has AC, but, and since it's a smaller room, I bet that will be the most comfortable to you. To be in. Yeah. Real quick, um, is this is this a place that I saw a video of a while back? Probably. It uh, is. It oh is right. Not the, the firehouse. It is yeah, yeah. R- three miles down the road from here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think I saw um, footage of that. And uh, and yeah, it's 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 definitely usable for what we need to do. Cool. Uh, and then the the potent there's some other studio thing so that you pup- might be able to use. Yeah. Yeah. that someone else owns uh, but Brian's working out the details with that and right. I, I don't want to really say anything about that um, couldn't say anything if I tried I swear <laughs> I, that was part of what I told you on Slack that night Brant um, 
Uh, but yeah, John, you you basically got it. There's a shared there's a space we might be able to share, and it seems like a really really nice uh, deal if if it can happen. It sounds it like was... it would be something that would just be used for modern rogue. Uh, uh, the, for what? Just be used for. Are we not supposed to talk about that? I don't know what that is. You're ma- you're acting like we're not supposed to talk about this. I feel like nobody's talked about it. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Well then, never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cut that out. Scam stuff. For, for <laughs> gear for the modern rogue. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Cool. Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, Man, so many puppies. <laughs> so many puppies. Uh, okay, so it sounds like basically One of we'll them might limited be a cat, to, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it sounds like we'll be a little limited to what we can do in that studio space. The studio space in the... The one studio space is more of a time limitation. The other one is a space limitation. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. Uh, update. That's your pup date. Bow, 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 bow. Uh, all right. What do you want to talk about next? Uh, we could just go over the topic two real quick. Okay. Uh, so last month, I, I assume you probably didn't hear the episode, correct, John? I did not. No, sorry. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so we talked a little bit about comments, like how Bryce and I handle comments, especially since I look at the, the Scam School comments so much and moderate those. Oh yeah. Um, you, I guess I could throw customer service yeah, emails you, into this. You get you get a little bit of comments on the website in the form of reviews, which a lot of those aren't actually reviews. They're just like, "This looks cool, five stars." Um, yeah, or or sometimes it's like, "This is the best thing I've ever received," and it gets one star because I I get <laughs> some people. They, I, I don't know if it's confusing the way it is or if it starts with one or five stars or something, but but you we get reviews every now and it's not a high percentage of them. Um, it's probably I mean you see these on Amazon too where people yeah. just they're clicking something and they they make a silly mistake by accident. Right. Uh, but then also yeah you deal with customer service and stuff like that. Uh, how how do you how because I, I assume you probably don't get anywhere near like the weird like vitriolic toxic side of the comment stuff that we deal with a lot on youtube and stuff like that but uh, what are what are your broad experiences with with community interaction so from what i deal with on a day-to-day basis i'm kind of i have the advantage because we have this weeding out process where basically the people i deal with are thinking about spending money or have mm. spent money. And so on that end, you have people who are um, naturally higher committed to the brand. Like it's not people who are just kind of wanting to troll. It's like people who care about what you're talking about and, and what you have available. Mm. And so it's kind of nice because then, you know, you're already dealing with a much easier to work with group of people. Mm. Um, in fact, the, the only times like the really bad stuff comes through is when we do free stuff. So like when we give, and so ironically it's like, you know, we're (laughs) giving stuff out uh, that normally costs something. And then that's when we get like the most complaints or Mm. uh, the most, you know, oh, you should do it this way. Or I'm mad that, you know, you pick this format or something like that. So, Mm. um, so that's always kind of a bummer because it, I don't know. We we want to do a lot of those free giveaway things, but it takes. We always have to pick a week that there's not a lot else going on because it it's a lot of work just to keep up with that stuff. Mm. But um, yeah. Overall, everyone's actually pretty cool. Um, every now and then you get someone who um, you know, it's it's either the shipment center's fault or our our fault that something got messed up, and then um, I'll basically uh, you know tell them sorry about that and and uh, offer them a couple of choices of things to do to help make the situation right, whether it be, you know, shipping out something overnight uh, mm-hmm. the next day that's the correct order or giving them some store credit for next time they want to buy something. Yeah. Um, but you're not, like, moderating comments. Generally. No, no, that's, that's basically just how... You know, the comments I get are, are direct communication to me about an order or a question. Um, so if there's a lot mm. of, like, international people, for instance, who will be like, do you ship to this country? And mm. it'll be like, yes, yeah. we do. 
But yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, there's not a whole lot of like, oh, here's a comment. Um, yeah, like what you guys would do on on YouTube, where I'm, I'm imagining you're specifically talking about comments that are just like, I don't know, yeah. like completely not appropriate to be on the page, or well, you know, since where you last go about month, censoring. La- last month, Brant and I talked about the different ways that we moderate in that I mostly don't and he does very much so very yeah. much uh, but since then I have gone in and looked at comments more often uh, and am moderating a little bit like mm-hmm. I want it to be a light touch because I don't want to I don't want to spark something but like like you said like people leave a comment and then they don't even notice if it gets removed yeah yeah, they, 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 I mean, a lot of times they just kind of, they have like a gut reaction and they had to get it out. Yeah. And then they'll notice if people are replying to it or whatever. But if nobody's replying to it, they did, nobody's going to go back to that video and check on their comment to see if it's still there, if it's performing well or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've got, I've got a list of terms that immediately flag the comment for just like, hateful stuff and stuff that stuff that somebody's only going to use if they're trying to incite incendiary reactions and stuff yeah um and i usually get rid of those and uh sometimes sometimes if somebody's clearly just like out there to attack somebody on the show or brian or whatever i'm like you know brian loves to do his his like Scam school customer service yeah like uh (laughs) which i have my own problems with but it's okay um, but a lot of times I'll see comments where it's like, I know Brian would love to write out a five paragraph response to this. Mm. I'm just going to delete it. Like Brian doesn't need to worry about this. Yeah. This is, <laughs> he, he has better things to do. He could be on Slack right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've, I've actually, I've actually calmed down on the comments a little bit, mm. uh, in that I just don't check it as often. Like it used to be, a I would check it a few times a day and yeah. just run through. Uh, would you delete my comment, Brent, if I said something upsetting? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Even if you didn't say something upsetting, I would say this is John. You're you not a, allowed. You have a bias. Um, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I, I've noticed. I've noticed comments where like uh, Brian will reply to someone who has commented something that I probably would have deleted. Yeah. But since Brian has commented on it it's like a top comment and like i don't know if he's tweeted at it tweeted it out because he does that a lot Mm -hmm. like then it's like okay you preserved that in amber for history yeah and it's it's the weird balance because sometimes you can kind of go in there and convert a person right like sometimes yeah they're just having a really weird day and they just they they need to know that it's a real person yeah they got to get something out of out of their system and then they see that brian responded to them and that he put time into the comment they're like oh i'm sorry man like i was just I don't even I don't even know what was going on. Like I actually like a lot of your videos. So I was just I was just not feeling it. Yeah. Um, but also but sometimes. also sometimes like they come back like even worse, and sometimes they just don't say anything, and then you just have like a bunch of people who are like, yeah, get them, Brian, get them, yeah, yeah. Or then the people who piggyback <laughs> and like double down on what Brian is saying. Yeah, and there's you know it's it's such a it's such a weird like nebulous thing, and I. I'm a big fan of just like I'm here to preserve uh, uh, this a lot like a lot like what I feel like our role is as 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 uh, um, moderators and operators in in the IRC. Yeah. Uh, like when I when I went and wrote up like a big a big thing about uh, our role as those people and moderators for Diamond Club TV and all that kind of stuff. Like, I feel like it's really important for the people in power to be there to preserve a sense of of a safe, welcoming community. Yeah. And so, if you have if you have users who come in and they are caustic and they just they just clearly want to antagonize people and like make people feel bad and uncomfortable and if 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 somebody's coming into the scam school channel and you can you can tell like they they want to make they want to like just make it a worse place. Yeah. Like they don't belong here. So I just get rid of them. That's that's my kind of general rule. Although it's tough because you know I also get rid of a fair amount of like self promotion of just people who come in and say, "Hey, check out my channel." Yeah, there, and, and there's so much of it um, that it's like, 
wh- how much is a good because Im- again going back to last month you kind of mentioned that there's like a little bit of a criteria to let some of that stuff fly yeah like these days i but i try to let in as much self promotion of people who are clearly doing magic that are like inspired by scam school because mm. i feel like i feel like we we have i mean we're like the number one magic channel on youtube and kids are learning magic and it's like where else do they have to go for this stuff right like there's not there's not a lot of places where they can get any kind of spotlight so i feel like if if they're like hey i, I made this cool trick brian please look at my trick like i'll totally let that through and you know if, if the community really just does not like it they will vote it down and it will get hidden and that's fine mm. uh, but i will let it stay there but I'll, especially if if they comment on the video in any way that demonstrates that they watch the video yeah then it's like everything's fair game i don't i don't care what you're posting as long as it's not like virus written um <laughs> those virus youtube comments no there are there are yeah there there are a couple of rough ones but uh, but yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird line to dance around, um, and it, I kind of go back and forth on it. And some days it's just like, what mood am I in? Like if if I'm like, man, there's a lot of people who are just like self promoting a ton. I'm just gonna delete all of them. And yeah. sometimes I'm just like, eh, I kind of like what you're doing. <laughs> I'll I'll let it in. And I I end up watching pretty much all of those like when they're really? like hey watch my video like wow. i will watch it and every now and then they surprise me every now and then it's like oh wow like i i know enough about magic that i can see what you did but i felt like you have promise and you performed it pretty well hmm. um so that's always kind of fun which is one of the reasons why i feel like it would be interesting if we did like some sort of community spotlight but that just gets so complicated and so time consuming that it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do right um, oh no that's a good idea though yeah, yeah. We is. are looking to add more content, and I feel like, well, obviously, it would be more work if we, again, if we're looking to get more. Well, and if we got at another some point, hand, we need more video people too. Yeah, because yeah. that could because be if, an easy if, to put together yeah. extra day of a show. If we had like a pair, another pair of hands to go through Brian's email and through comments and look at some of the stuff, and you know, figure out a way to uh, uh, collate uh, some sort of showcase feature. Yeah, and you, you could even do a thing like showcase.scamstuff.com and then just like people could submit their entries or you could just have like a behind the scam where Brian's like, hey, in the comments down below, post mm. your stuff and we can look through it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Filmwright used to do that kind of stuff. They used to yeah, do the, uh, their Monday their, challenges. Yeah, the Monday challenges, and uh, which I competed in a few of. Um, and, you know, those were super cool. But, you know, they talked about we would spend like two days of just looking through entries because they would get hundreds and hundreds of entries and they'd have to sit through and watch all of them. Um, and Though I guess if the idea is not a contest but a showcase, then maybe yeah, it's more just of look, a you just get reserve pool. What you need. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But still, I mean, it's it's still going to take a fair amount of time to do to do all the curation and then to cut it together in some kind of cohesive way and all that stuff. Right. It is an interesting idea. It's just not there yet. Mm-hmm. Comments. Someday. Um, speaking of YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Uh, YouTube is updated. Uh, most notably, they no longer say 301 plus anymore. Yeah. They just give you an estimated number. Back yeah. in my day, we never <laughs> know how much a YouTube video was looked at until a day later. Spot. We thought it was always 301. Well, the great thing now <laughs> is that you never know if that youtube number is right because it's always filtering views anyway what how does it filter views uh basically it looks at who where where the view is coming from and tries to determine if it's real or not oh interesting uh so instead of waiting until 301 to start that whole process they're just doing it continuously but now your views take longer to reflect i see uh so you're always a little bit fudged yeah, I mean, it's more or less the same, the same exact process that was in place prior to. It's just now they're a little bit more transparent with yeah. it. I mean, do we have reverence for 301? No. Like, no. Are we going to miss it? No. 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 Never look back. I already, <laughs> I already just like, I mean. I'm already into 302. Yeah. 305, maybe. <laughs> uh, you know, like, if you, 
what's up? When, when, uh, they also they also updated the UI, which I think looks nice. Um, some some people, oh the the overlay the, yeah. the video player yeah yeah the video player. Uh, some people got that months ago, but I think now it's kind of universal across the board. Mm-hmm. Um, and you go you go you go look back at some of the old UIs and oh, and th- I I think that's how people are gonna view three hundred one plus. Mm-hmm. And they're just going to look back and be like, oh, yeah, that was a weird. And like, we put up with that? Yeah. Fucking remember this? Unfortunately. Like we, we got an old photo of the old. Oh, geez. The gray bar. Is Ooh. that really what it looked like? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. The big ass YouTube logo in the corner. Oh, boy. Powered by Google. Well, I know that the um, I know that the red bar, like the what surprises me that I don't remember is that black bar next to it with the time code. Mm, I yeah. do not remember that. Yeah. yeah but this, some of that is still kind of... This is a very early YouTube. Like, this must be just right after the Google purchase or something. Because, like, pretty quickly, this got cleaned up a lot. The thing with all this stuff, too, is, like, how much of it do you keep to retain that? You know, because you watch movies that came out in, like, 2008 or whatever when, you know, it's, plus. like, our kick-ass or whatever. And, and it's like, oh... Some guys uploading to YouTube and they have five million views in one second because that always happens on YouTube. And it's, it's gone like, viral. And it's <laughs> yeah, it's like no, they would have three hundred one plus right now. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. uh, but like how much anyway? How much of that do you keep to to uh, have that kind of iconic? Or how do you rethink? Burn it all to the ground. Kind of the uh, yeah, whatever. That's what I say. I mean, I'm I'm always like. I, th- this could also kind of tie into another thing. Sure. I'm 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 always like, anytime there's sort of like a kind of early new revision of any kind of new design for a website or a program or whatever, I'm just on board immediately. Like I I want everything to always continually change and update and evolve and grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I, I used to be all about that until like uh, with the best example it, are two examples that Brian and I deal with on it day-to-day basis is the one paypal changed everything but it made it impossible to look up your old transactions so we'll try to figure out how much we paid someone (laughs) and we can like can't even search the transactions without and you used to be able to go to classic view and still do it Mm -hmm. but it's like ah, you can't even do that anymore right but then Mm -hmm. also we use ship station for any any shipments that go directly from austin somewhere and uh uh that to get the reporting, I have to switch to the classic view to, mm. because they also like, um, and I guess that's that's a little different. It's take, they took out a feature, yeah, ver, or mm. made a feature well, harder to find mm. versus just making it look better. Yeah. Same but, for um, same for WordPress. Uh, we use WordPress for uh, basically a lot of the podcasts. That's just how they get pushed. Hmm. Uh, but so like weird things, which has its it rolls its own WordPress. It's still using the classic WordPress site that you probably know. Uh, but for like cord killers and this show, uh, we use WordPress.com because we're just making a dumb RSS feed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and WordPress.com, like it looks totally different, and it's it's lost a lot of the efficiencies that the old one had. Like being able to switch your site easily, being able to make new posts and get to your posts from, you know, less clicks. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's the thing where I'm like, man, it's just you made it harder to do everything that was working fine, you know. And and also they got they got rid of uh, 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 that 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 high five game. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's the best example. So tell me about this. Mailchimp took out the high five thing. So. Basically, when you send out a MailChimp email mm-hmm. um, a, a month ago and prior to that, it, it, you get a high five from the chimp. And, uh, and um, I used to always just like fake in the air high five it because it's kind of, they do it in a fun way. There's like a little animation. Hmm. And then um, I noticed if you actually click it, they would high five you again and the mo- monkey's hand would be red or like a little redder. And if you keep high fiving it, it would get red and red, more red and more red. And uh, so I just was like, "Well, how how red does it get?" And then it just switches. If you click it like twenty times, it brings you over to Fast Fives, a video game, where basically it's a a screen, and you get these like hands that come in from like side to side, and you have to press the direction on mm-hmm. the uh, keyboard to high five it. But you can't if you high five a rock or a banana. 
or something that's not a, a hand, a hand. Yeah. You, uh, you, lose. you lose a life. Okay. You get three uh, lives. But if you yeah. high five the gorilla hand, you get an extra life. Okay. So, so look out for the gorilla hand. Or I guess it's supposed to be a chimp hand, but it look it uh. does not. It's like really big and it doesn't look like a chimpanzee hand. But um, anyway, so this was this awesome game and it was a lot of fun and it played this music. Uh, it's kind of this eight bit style, and so and Brian it kind of became I, a ritual, right? Yeah. So Brian and I would play every time we do an email every Friday. So we would do a. Uh, we would play fast fives and we alternate week per week. I have mm-hmm. a high score, and we'll always have a high score now that you can't play it anymore. <laughs> uh, but we'd write down high score, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Brent hooked us up with the scoreboard. It was great. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, one day MailChimp changed a whole bunch of stuff. Some of it was good, uh, more helpful, easier to use for the actual stuff. Some things uh, just aren't all together. But mm-hmm. um, the fast fives game, at the end, when you send the email, it gives you a thumbs up. Thumbs and up. I was like, my first thought was, oh, there's a new game. Uh, yeah. Fast, I can't wait to up. play it. Oh, like no. m- thumb ring toss. I don't know. Something with thumbs. And you just can't click it. It does nothing. There's no oh. game anymore. And it's like, I bet you could play Fast Five somewhere. Well, but oh, wait, you didn't it's see. not the same. Well, yeah, it's not the same. But you didn't see that. Like, like because Brian tweeted a much angrier version of that rant when he found yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because that's because. <laughs> we we deal with with our feelings in different ways, but uh, <laughs> but that's uh, but uh, but but so uh, Mailchimp replied to him and was like, oh, we just have the Flash game up on a page, and it's not the that's same. not the same. It's not that's it? not the same. Well, it's probably the same game, but it's okay. not the same as finishing the email and sure. immediately go and high five like you physically uh, yeah. were like clicking to high five the chimp, and then you would be brought into the game, and sure. it was like just that. Everything going through, I don't know. It, it, no, I get you. I get. It's like it's, it's like yeah. if I'm gonna go to a different window and play a game, I'm not gonna play Fast Fives because it's not that great of a game. <laughs> right. I'm gonna play something else if it, I'm gonna make a ritual. It was that. It was all. It's all part of the same right process. There. It was yeah. part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe but, maybe maybe it was too much bandwidth. Maybe you guys were were five and too fast. Your your scores were too high, John. You broke the internet. Well, this was this was the same. We were actually making a joke about it the same day. I was saying it was the most expensive free to play game mm-hmm. that we that either of us play. Uh, yeah, I, I I have never spent any money on a free to play game, uh, which is hilarious. Um, yeah. Like I'm always looking for ways to spend money on Hearthstone, but then I always just end up being like, well, I can just get. I don't know. Like they don't have anything compelling enough to spend real cash on. Yeah. Um, they had the new card card expansion out. Yeah, but it's like I, I'm getting... I can't digest the cards. If I got the 50-pack bundle they have, I can't digest all those cards fast enough mm-hmm. to smartly use them. So I actually like to get them in slowly and slowly make them... As I get the cards yeah. for free... Work them in, understand I work them, them okay. in, yeah. And that's actually how I build all my decks, and it works well for me. But anyway, that's off topic. Waffleophagus says it could be because uh, Flash is on its way out, and they didn't want to have... A flash thing tied to their service. Well, then make a new game that's not <laughs> flash, like or convert. Like, you yeah. can't take it. I don't know. That was like move it to Unity, I, right? Yeah. Well, no, because Chrome doesn't support Unity anymore. Well, anyway, mm. long story short, the thing was it, it, we were making a joke because it was um, we you pay per su- subscriber on Mailchimp, um, and so we give them quite a bit of, uh-huh. of dough every month, but uh, we also always. We never thought about switching because it was like, well, we get to play Fast Fives every week, and now it's oh, like, so well, now there's hey, if, no if, commitment. If someone comes up and they have a better service, like we're, I'm no longer emotionally chap, uh, uh, emotionally attached to Mailchimp, so mm. it's their own. There might be their own fault if we switch companies. Hey, man, dug their own grave but with this all was, those hands. This actually, this also happened the same day that. So the mystery box deck. Um, the mystery box deck is uh, from Theory 11 and it's wrapped up it's from J.J. Uh, Abrams helped design it uh, and it's got a question mark craft paper kind of thing and it's really nice presentation so I basically find out that um, if you look at pause it when it shows the front of that deck okay uh, so we're, we're looking um, at a Theory 11 teaser for the mystery box yeah okay so pause it right there so basically uh, that's what you get but uh, so uh, and we told them this we told them this early on but I when we first set up with our fulfillment center, I said, do not 
you know, there's certain packaging items that you have to like treat very well. Brian signs a lot of things. Don't put the barcode near the signature, blah, 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 all this mm -hmm. stuff. I specifically mentioned that, say, you know, that needs to be put on the bottom or the back. And so we get this picture from someone this week who's like, yo, uh, I'm kind of disappointed and the picture is just that and the barcode is across the question mark. Question mark. And it's like, oh. come on, like you don't need to be anyone to understand that it does not go there. Like if you're yeah. if your job is to put the barcode on, like like you literally could have put it anywhere else and it would have been okay. But like I don't understand what, and it doesn't take any extra effort. Yeah, there oh, it is. Look at it. Right? Oh, it was man. bad. And it's it, so small you can this see is, the question mark. You know it shouldn't be there. So, so this happened, and um, so uh, I've actually been really happy with our f f fulfillment center. This was the first time I was like downright angry at them because it just it's so tacky. Yeah. So I I went through and I was like, well, how many of them have this? And and apparently only a small handful did, and they were able to slowly peel off the the code okay. and uh put it on the back and so and you know as someone who buys like a, i i told brian the story um i went to buy toy story when it was first released on blu-ray and i went to the target and there's just like someone because they have to fit in these security cases so someone just smushed in all of the blu-rays and that nice like slip case is just torn on literally uh -huh hundreds of Toy Story Blu-rays that were at Target. Oh. And it's just like, well, I'm not going to buy it here. Right. Like, yeah, why yeah, like, like, be good. Like, yeah. why couldn't you... Uh, it, it was it was just so strange that, you know, that someone would just not think through what that means to the, the customer, right? Yeah. So anyway, but, but we got all that fixed out, but it was funny because it was the same day as the MailChimp thing happened, and I was really mad at Webgistics for the the fulfillment mishap with the barcodes until yeah. the MailChimp thing happened, and which to me totally little, eclipsed it. I was like, well, yeah. this is clearly the <laughs> the bigger atrocity. Like, well, because eventually the Webgistics thing got figured out. Well, that did get, yeah, that did get fixed, and, and they're really good no to fast, work with. Fast Five. What was it, Fast Five? Uh... Yeah, Fast Five was five. the game. Fast and the Furious Five? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so sorry for that. I, no, I hope that was go. an enjoyable story of, mm -hmm. of yeah. when I was upset. Yeah. But that, uh, That's, you know, you get, it, you, like you said, it's a ritual. And you get, you, you look forward to it. And, yeah. Uh, you Don't kind change of the ritual. It. Don't change it, man. Uh, let's see. W what else should we talk about here? Um uh, so this, this this next one is just a super quick one. Okay, what's uh, up? Uh, it kind of it kind of ties into what I was talking about earlier, uh, where I'm. I like to think of myself as an early adopter. Yeah, uh, you're on the cutting edge. Yeah, uh, and so Adobe CC makes that really easy, right? You subscribe in, and mm. they push out you know some minor updates every every three to four weeks, and then you know they they push out a big update every like four to six months right right um it's real nice and i just you know just every now and then i see a little little update icon i just go yeah new new version of everything oh but basically since since we started using creative cloud every, every time they have like a big update something's broken really something's broken no right? way so like last year last year they, they put out a, a, a big update and basically premiere would crash all the time, oh. just nonstop. So I would, I would end up having like six to eight project files, like Premiere files, for every episode of Scam School because it would crash six to eight times, and I'd have to do a recovery of it. Wow. Um, but you know, luckily, did you turn off the updates? Uh, yeah. Or I is don't. the, or is the part of you that needs the update is like, I don't care if it's broken. I need the latest version. Sort of. Because <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um. Because I. Because I'm totally that way. Yeah, I like I I need I need the I need the hot new stuff. I need uh, like it's probably got new features. I don't know. Yeah. Um and you know that lasted for a little bit and eventually they like quietly updated it and it mm. started working. Yeah. <laughs> and uh uh but that was kind of rough. Well, recently they updated again. Yeah, is and, the um, 2015 yeah, so they they Update. they've had the the 2015 version out since probably April or so. Okay, it was a few months into the year that they push out 2015, which is kind of weird because there's like 
uh, Adobe Premiere, and then there's also like Adobe Premiere CC, but then there's also Adobe Premiere CC, CC 2015, 2015 right. which are like different products. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so they they recently it's the major upgrade yeah, that sure. they stopped doing for CS basically, mm-hmm. uh, and so they they recently pushed out like a mini update on the 2015 suite, mm-hmm. and as somebody who uses templates a lot, yeah. this really caused some hectic shit. What? Really? What oh happened? Oh my god! What, what, what broke? Dynamic link broke. What? damn near full stop what the so, fuck we, so what? what what happens uh-huh. is so what we use we I, I use premiere and after effects tied together a lot yeah and so what you used to do back in the old days is you would you would create an after effects uh uh, uh time, project time, yeah project uh, you'd have timelines in there and you'd you'd create your motion graphics or whatever and then when you want that in premiere you'd render it out into a video file and then import the video file into Premiere. Mm-hmm. And then if you just wanted to update that, you'd have to go back in After thing. Effects, yeah. fix it, re-render it, replace it. So Dynamic Link takes takes that composition and makes it, a, it, it an updatable file yeah. in Premiere. Yeah, it's a smart object in Premiere. It live updates when you update the After Effects file. Yeah, It's amazing. It's like the best thing in the world. I can't imagine life without it. Mm. But... And now that's your reality. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how broke? How broken? So is it? So basically, uh, let me let me figure out the best way to describe this. So the there's a weird compatibility issue with old versions of like old After Effects saves from before the update mm-hmm. and new saves after the update. Ooh. Um. So I find if I'm using a file that was created with the old version of After Effects, yeah. you can you can still import it into Premiere, and it will update when you start up Premiere. Right. When you start up Premiere, it will do a live update, and then for the rest of the time you have the program open, it That's will not it update. It right. stays how it was. Um, and then also there's, there's some weird stuff. But basically, if you wanted to update, you'd have to close down the whole Premiere file man and then reopen up premiere and then it would update again so i i noticed this a lot when when i do uh, uh like the the twitter card yeah in uh, in in scam school yeah so we live update those those numbers and it it does its magic uh so what i've had to do is and there's no easy way that i've found to see which files were created with the old version of After Effects and which files were created with the new version of After Effects. And so what I do is I've, I've got this template and then I copy it over or I duplicate it yeah. and then change all the stuff in the new version. Hmm. But then it's like, okay, which one's which? So basically I've had to go back through all my templates, start up a n- new project in After Effects, then import everything in from the old one, and then sync everything up with all of the other templates that are linked to that template. Yeah. And it's just a whole mess. Wow. It's a whole mess. See, like, this is why I'm not done with updates. Updates are the best. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. They're the best. Waffle Lumpus says to uh, that you need to start reading the change logs. Yeah. Nah. And if it's something you're excited about, you can risk it. Nah. I, but if it's like... Well, yeah, was it a features update or was it like another patch? Uh, there were some features. I know they, they just had like a big like um, uh, puppet animation uh, thing that mm-hmm. went into the new stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, ah, oh, that looks kind of cool. But okay. Yeah. I uh, That's rough. I should go in like the next five minutes so I can make it to the post office. Just oh okay. just yeah, no putting worries. that out there. Feel sure. free to head out when you need to. We'll uh, we'll keep the fire going. I can probably stay for one more topic. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe maybe this one I got I got right this, here. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, while that we're looks all like, here, that looks uh, like probably the most the most go. John one. So here's the thing. Rocket League, catch the fever. Um, uh, sweeping the nation. Team China is representing the most honorable uh, people's uh, uh, republic. 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 Um, and yet, that leaves out John, 
uh, anyway, the the we found out a couple weeks ago that John also plays Rocket League. Rock, La- he last, has Rocket League. Last month we had we had a, a nice little Rocket League. Played breakdown. a lot. Yeah. 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 I, right now I'm probably playing it just as much as Hearthstone, which wow. is like. Uh, I, it's funny. Uh, I used to never be into playing the same game over and over again, but Hearthstone, for some reason, has clicked. I really like card games like that anyway. Like I always like yeah. the Pokemon game, and um, it's. I think it's probably the online element, huh, that keeps it. Going yeah, well, it's because you, huh? you can play. You know, there was that Pokemon trading card game uh, for Game Boy Color. So it was the trading card game, but you could play it against the computer in like kind of story mode. It was awesome. And I, I played a lot of that and liked it. And it was funny, right before Hearthstone came out, I actually was playing I was playing that um, a ROM of it mm-hmm. uh, and just having a blast and thinking, oh, man, I wish they would, you know, re-release this or make it update it, you know. Yeah. But then Hearthstone came out, and I was like, yeah, oh, I'll try this. And, uh, and I liked it, like, instantly. And I've been playing that. For, since the iPad version came out, like I don't think there's been, I don't think I've gone two days without <laughs> playing a game. Oh. So which is weird for me because usually I'm on to the next game or whatever. I'm mm. I'm a very, I've never gotten into World of Warcraft, yeah, uh, or any like first person shooters where you you know there's that competitive nature where you keep playing the same game, you get better and better at it. Mm-mm. But Hearthstone's like that, and then um, I I think Rocket League I'll eventually stop, but but uh, I've played a whole lot more than I ever thought I would. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think with both those games, it's just they're very uh, they have a much wider appeal than I think a first person shooter does, just because it's um it's easier to play, it's easier yeah, to it's, approach, it's easier to play, but there's still a lot of strategy, and in both of those games, um, and I guess this is true for a lot of popular online games but once you're uh if you, if you lose you can get back in again and even if you, if you lose like 10 times in a row you're still having fun or you're getting something out of it yeah or you had a nice goal in rocket league or you got a pack of cards in hearthstone whatever yeah but so so apparently there's a a tournament coming up yeah a uh, diamond club tournament a diamond pants tournament yeah and uh apparently uh my understanding is that Sunbun already signed us up as part of Team China, you and I, Brandt. Yes. <laughs> but uh, if you get the PC version, John, uh, you could join us and we could do I, Team BB. I will not be able to get Team the Brief. PC version uh, uh, yeah. because that would require me getting a new PC. So I'd either have to play on a on someone else's PC. Uh, but they're, they're not letting PlayStation users on well, in the well, tournament? Well, we, it's, we, we talked about this. is we, uh, You can cross-play, but yeah. you can't do cross-party. So we couldn't set up a party oh. where we are on but the we, same But we could do a dedicated private match where you could join in as well. Gotcha. Well, we'll t- we'll talk about. It. I yeah. I it won't be the end of the world for me if I'm if I'm disincluded for my uh, for the uh, the PC master racist. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, that's happening here. But that, that's I should use that more often. PC you master should. racist. It's, it's a good yeah. line. Um, uh, but yeah, the people I, who love PCs because they love really it. are. They just really are. But anyway, <laughs> racist. Well, I mean, consoleist or whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm playing on the PC. I got no problem with any consoles. Uh, previously, well, that's because you're not part of the PC master race. That's true. You just that's true. play. I, I don't identify you with. Played that. it on. Yeah, you play on PC because you want to or whatever, right? This is what I got. You got. But you're not like, yeah. oh, if you don't, if you didn't get it on a Steam sale for a dollar, then you suck. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, previously I mentioned it might be kind of fun to have sort of like an intramural, uh, uh, bizarre magic kind of thing. We could have we could have Brian join in. He's he's expressed an interest in playing Rocket League, but he has, I don't think he's bought it yet. <laughs> um, but I yeah I think it would be fun to have like sort of like like a little a little bracket between us, and then we could stretch out and like play with some chat realm at some point in time. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds like fun. So you can't... uh, That is a bummer, though. So you you can... It's cross-play, but only on random matches, so you can't... Sunbun says you can do cross-platform through private. Yeah, Uh, yeah, you can do private match and set up like a server with a password, and then you could just join the match, and we could join the match. Oh, I didn't know you could do servers. Yeah. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, you just go to set up a match private match. We could try to figure that out, but... um. Uh, would the, if I played on PC, would it let me use uh, 
like a console controller? Oh yeah, that's no, you should yeah. play it with a console controller. Oh, is that do you guys? I, I, you guys I just do? use a wired 360 controller. Yeah, because gotcha. I got got the wireless. Yeah, I can't imagine not playing it with a controller. No, yeah. Sergeant Muffin tries to play it with a keyboard, and I'm just like, fucking what, dude? It's like, come on, bro. I kind of, I, I get how it would work, but there's something about that. The way that game feels is, I don't know, it's, it's very. It's better uh, with, it's just, it works a lot better. Uh, yeah. So we did have one last question for you, John, and we forgot, uh, from Waffle Uh uh We were talking a little bit about the pre-show about the, uh, there's the new scam school paperback. Oh, this guy wants to know how we don't make any money off of the uh, off of when you buy it on my. Oh on yeah, Amazon. So, uh, well, I was being um, uh, what's the word? I, Facetious. I was, I was exaggerating. I was exaggerating on the no money part, um, but it's I, less. It's, it is sig- it's significantly less because so the way that all works is that um, a. Uh, Brian signed a. I will say I make no money off of the the Amazon one. Brian will make some money off of it because he gets some he gets some type of percentage off the sales, but he gets paid up front for the book being published through Skyhorse, which is the publisher. And then Amazon buys you know however many copies. If you see it in a store somewhere, they bought copies directly from Skyhorse. Mm-hmm. And out of those profits, Brian gets some small percentage of it. I'm not sure what it is, but it's also not related to to how I get paid. Um, so so I'm yeah I don't make any money from that. Brian makes some money, but we definitely both of us make a lot more money if it's bought straight through scam stuff mm-hmm. because then we're buying. Like like Amazon does, we're buying that directly from Skyhorse, mm. and so we're able to you know You're, the sell transaction that, is with you, yeah, and not yeah. So a basically, royalty. what Amazon would have made if it, if we priced it the same as Amazon did, then what Amazon would have made off the book, we make off of off of uh, ours. Okay. So so that's how that works um, because basically, and that's with all scam stuff. Uh, you know, we're we are making you know deals with um with people who supply existing products and we'll basically go in and and buy a whole bunch of them at a reseller rate Mm -hmm. and then and then sell it on the store so so yeah that's why that's that's how it works in terms of um all that happening but but that's not to say i i don't want to make it sound like like i i'm an amazon kid so i use amazon for you know if you're a prime member and you want the book right now only yeah, Amazon kids will remember this. Especially, especially because <laughs> we 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 don't carry the book right now. Because again, and that, I don't know why Amazon was able to get it so much faster than us too. Because apparently, the mm. publisher is like, well, we don't even have copies in our warehouse, which is when mm. we ship it to you. Oh, so that's why we don't have them right now. But um, but hey, if you want your uh, to take advantage of your Prime membership and buy it through Amazon. Uh, well, don't don't think that I'm going around being like eh, those Amazon yeah. kids making us <laughs> not be able to do. It. That's that's totally In fine. In my day, scam we had st- to go to a bookstore. <laughs> scam scam stuff. Uh, Great. Scam stuff does well, and uh, we would uh, appreciate the business for the but books and better. everything else. But uh, but if you would like to get the book from Amazon or a different provider. Uh, I, we go totally do, understand. That's go fine. Go, go buy do where it. You will buy. I, that yeah. was not meant to make you feel bad. I was more, I was more jokingly saying that, and I do apologize if it came. Oh across no, you're good. Poorly. You're good. Uh, so yeah, it sounds down. like you need to get to the mailbox. Yeah, I do need to get to the mailbox okay. so, uh, to get some stuff out. All right, but, we'll, we'll right. talk to you next time. Yeah, bye everyone. It was a pleasure having you. It was it was a pleasure yeah. being on the show. Yep. Um, uh, we got a couple more topics here. We can. You guys have fun. Into. Now sure. you guys can all talk about me. Yes. All right, great. Uh, <laughs> I, I, bye, John. Bye, John. I, I, I wanted to. I wanted to top off that Rocket League talk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I went up against a pro the other day. Whoa! Did you see this? Yes. Like you I got one v one and just got destroyed. <laughs> It was great though. It was, it was such a fun experience, uh, just hanging out with that dude for a little bit. Yeah. And so, what is he like a legit esports player? Uh, he's on. Uh, he's he's on Danish? Team Ariel. Ooh, Team Ariel. Yeah. This uh, is some of your no clips footage yeah. of uh, the game. I'll skip ahead. So uh, yeah, that that night I was I was I was streaming out stuff. Um, and this dude opened up uh, in chat, going, "Hey, so you should probably just surrender." <laughs> And I was like, 
all right, so this is some this is no, some I trash talk bullshit. Remember. Like, <laughs> all right, bro. Like, I'm sure you're great. Come on, bring it. And then he was like, Yeah, no. Like, actually, I'm I'm kind of like a, a, a tournament player. Like, oh, I do yeah. pretty good. And I just kind of started this account. So like, his accountant is low ranked. Yeah. Uh, and the the first goal, I was like, Hmm. Well, I always mess up the first goal. Sure. Those head to heads are real tough. One one. And then the second goal, I was like. All right, yeah. All right, this he's going to be a rough one. He's this legit. One. Uh, but but yeah, like it was. I was like, there's no way I'm leaving. I mean, I've, I've just got a problem with leaving. Like I just refuse to do it uh, under what, any circumstances. What we're seeing here is three goals within the first minute of play. Yeah, and it escalates. It goes on from there. Yeah, uh, and you know, I feel like you can't really get better at the game if you're just playing against people who you're better than so this was a fun like learning experience of let me see how he handles the ball let me see how like his some of his strategy what a save <laughs> um and let me, let me see what i can do to defend against this yeah uh which by the very end I started to sort of get the hang of defending against him. I, I, I don't have enough uh, motor control to attack against him, uh, yeah. but I started to get some good saves towards the end. Okay, which I felt proud of. So you feel like it was beneficial? Yeah. In the end. Okay. And also, this was starkly contrasted by a couple matches I had later in the night, mm -hmm. where I was playing against some people who were better than me, but only nominally. Yeah. And it was the first time I had kind of experienced uh, some berating trash talk over voice. Oh, shit. In Rocket League. In uh, the built-in voice. Yeah. Wow. And it's the only time I've experienced people voice chatting outside of the one or two matches of Curly. Where yeah. you would kind of add a stinger in there. But... You know, it was like we. Pl I played a match that I, we lost uh, three to two. It was two v two, uh, and my teammate was like, he was like talking about like, why aren't you here? Like I'm centering. You oh should. You should attack. And it's like <laughs> the dude's clearly taking it too seriously. And then yeah. the two people on the other team were like, they were berating us, but they were berating my teammate a little bit more because he was on voice chat, so they knew they could get a little bit more of a reaction out of yeah. him. Yeah. And. Like it was, it was so interesting to see me lose so bad to the pro, and him having so much more humility and humanity to him, yeah. and just like understanding that okay, like clearly I'm a tier above this dude, but he's sticking through it, which is pretty admirable, and like he's giving it an honest shot, yeah, uh, and just like the the differences between how those people hand handled both of those situations was really interesting. Mm -hmm. I just really hope that. Like that, that those last two games were were not uh, indicative of the direction that the game and the community of the game is heading. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of a lot of esports games uh, kind of fall into that trapping, and I don't want this to become a Dota or a League of Legends where it's just really garbage to be around the people who play those games. Uh, so, so. Uh at the end of this match with, with degrading Danish, you ended up one fifteen. Uh, I I was looking to see what what the the goal you scored on him was. Yeah. Uh, but looking back at the footage, this is very clearly him taking the ball <laughs> and knocking it very slowly into his own goal. Yep, he definitely uh, gave me a pity goal, which I thought <laughs> was uh, was pretty entertaining at the time. Like it, oh man! It was so far back that I don't think that replay would have had a sl the slow motion section of like right. hitting the ball. Sure, yeah, yeah. Oh man! Uh, and then and then he was like, "All right, well, I'll just play backwards from now." <laughs> and then and then by the end, he was like, "Okay, I'm just gonna do defense." Okay. Yeah. Um, wow. And then that's that's when you can really see that my ball control skills are not uh, particularly. Ooh. Yeah. They're right. They're right. Rocket League. Rocket League. Uh, it's a fun game. Yeah. I think with the esports community, you're always going to get people who are like the 3-2 guy who was just mm -hmm. giving you shit. Right. Uh, but I think there is an... Uh, there's uh, some, something like Rocket League, which is a little simpler. I think you'll probably get more people who are more chill and just like... 
at the end of the day, I really just need to go in and I, I'm pretty sure you could disable voice chat, which is what I'm going to do. Yeah. I kind of wish it was disabled by default, but I guess it's mm. j just the same if I disable it. Yeah. Uh, because if you're doing any kind of team communication, you're not going to do it over native voice chat because that talks to the other team as well. Right. You're going to use a um, mumble or a team speak or something. Yeah. Like you're going to use some kind of dedicated service. Uh, and I'm, I'm a big fan of their quick chat options because... The worst possible scenario mm -hmm. is you mess up, you make a mistake, and the other team compliments you. <laughs> They're right. doing it sarcastically. Right. But it's it's shot. so much easier to take in if it's like they're complimenting you. Yeah. You know, what a save. Hey. Um and I think there's I think there's a real charm to that. Uh huh. And sometimes that charm gets a little diminished by people typing in chat and saying really nasty stuff. Yeah. Uh, or even worse, I feel, is when they come in with their voice. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like, uh, I guess unless you are really upset at your teammates not being on the same skill level as you, the, like, the only time I've gotten hot playing Rocket League is when uh, someone on the other team has made it a point. Because I play, I play defense a lot. Uh, makes it a point to come after me to try to make me explode. Hmm. Uh, and, like, very obviously, after a couple of seconds, you get what they're trying to do because clearly the ball is not over by me. Right. And they're coming at me with their full rocket boost speed, and it's like, fucking... Because sometimes it works. Like, that's the thing, is, like, it works, and that's what upsets yeah. me a lot. Yeah, and that doesn't upset me too much because then, like, they're taking themselves out of the gameplay, which... Makes their team less effective, or sure, whatever. but uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's weird. I but, think, but, but, but I guess what I'm saying is like if that's the worst thing yeah. I've had, and uh, is as part of my native gameplay experience, mm -hmm. like there isn't a whole lot of fodder to be so upset on mass, yeah. And also, it's weird to me because like that, that 2v2 at the end of the night was, I think it was a ranked game. Oh, really. But, like, I'm ranked, like, 80 or 100 at the time. Yeah. And so you have to be pretty close in rank, which means you're not that great. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, kind of your fault. Uh, it was his teammates. His teammates fucked him over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but but you, I feel like the game really shines when you get, like, a group of people that you know and you play with them. Because then it's, it's easy to, like, experiment with, like, oh, I'm going to go for this crazy aerial shot. And if I miss, then, well, that sucks. But, oh, well. I had you fun. Know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, Rocket League's yeah, fun. Rocket League. Um, yeah. Well, let's 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 see what other one of these topics. I kind of want to talk a little bit about uh, last Tuesday. Uh, okay. That was we were doing the Tesla. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Brian talked about this on Night Attack, so I don't feel weird about talking about it. But um, sure. Uh, one of the products we're looking for, looking to have on Scam stuff, is a do-it-yourself Tesla coil. Uh, and it's it's like a science project, right? You mm -hmm. you you learn how to solder, and you do a lot of soldering. Okay. Uh, you you put it together. You ch it's got a USB thing that you install. Like it's 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 a cool. It's a nice uh, project. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't realize how uh, uh, much how, work it was going to be. How much work? Yeah, it was going to be. We kind of assumed okay, it'll be about four or five hours. We'll just like bang it out in a day. Uh, but uh, it, it definitely like one of the steps is that you need to coat the uh, the coil the the copper coil uh, once a day for four days hmm. uh, with a a uh, like a uh, 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 not a lacquer but a, a covering just a protective covering so it doesn't fucking you know catch fire and explode right uh, so. Uh, we uh so so we going in like i could tell pretty early on that like w our trajectory was going to make it a real close call because uh we i also had wanted to shoot the behind the scam that you ended up putting up the mark deck that day hmm. uh or the day before which got pushed also yeah um as well as shooting an ad uh the what ended up being the food truck ad mm -hmm. uh and then night attack also was happening uh and so it was around six o'clock or so that like we were probably about 70 75 percent done and uh 
uh, something happens and uh, I think maybe they're trying to unsolder a, a piece that they had put on incorrectly and uh, oh no I think there was like a connection there's like a, a, a connection and um, uh, it, uh, the piece broke just beyond repair right uh, and it it that that was that was tough uh because at that point we were coming on you know our six or seven or eight of like trying to put this thing together uh we had had a whole stoppage in the middle of the day where we couldn't really get the usb stuff to work really well because we didn't we didn't notice that there was a revision part that we needed to replace because Mm -hmm. they changed the kit at some point during production um and and it really like Oh, it was really rough. It was, and really you guys rough recorded a lot of footage. Yeah, it ended, we filled up two hundred and fifty gigabytes of footage of people sitting at a table going. Hmm, yeah, yeah it, I, don't, I, don't know, I, I also thought I also thought it would only be four or five hours, so I set up a two camera setup mm-hmm. with a wide and a handheld. Uh, and it's like you know what, uh, make it work. And so just as I was about to have to get to the point of like writing the cards of like unloading them and replacing them as we go uh that's when it broke Mm. uh but yeah i didn't uh, if i had if i knew known it was going to take so long i wouldn't i probably just would have done handheld only right uh but and also like I, i spoke to john about this at some point i don't even think i've seen brian since that happened i i haven't no you haven't i haven't seen brian in a couple weeks I don't yeah. think since like the last game school shoot, I don't think I've seen Brian since then. Yeah, maybe no, maybe once, but uh, did you come over to do remixes or behind the games? Nope. No. Yeah, because you guys got caught up on remixes a while ago and mm-hmm. behind the games they've uh, done. But yeah, like I, I was just talking to John and I was like, "You got to rethink how you're shooting this episode because like there's there's not going to be anything. There's not going to be like any crazy reactions of like." Oh, we got it put together that you so, need to get live. Right. And so it's the kind of thing where you need to like sit down, build it out, have it done. Maybe if you really want, yeah. you can maybe do like a quick reassembly sort of footage, but mostly sure. it's going to be like showing off the product after it's built cuz yeah. unless you want to do like a tested style uh like live build. Hey, we're doing like a 3-hour build. Come right. and watch our video. So that that sentiment was not lost on me. Yeah. At some point, I was like, I'm going to turn the cameras off, and I'll turn them back on when we start the next step, or we do major milestones, because it's a lot of soldering. Mm-hmm. I mean, of the footage that we shot, 80 90% is just soldering, Sitting, or, yeah. you know, it, not that there wasn't some, you couldn't go through and get some interesting pull quotes, but mm-hmm. at some point, that's eight hours of footage of not even the whole thing and like it's got an instruction manual it's not like you're teaching people how to do a thing that they don't know how to do yeah and it it was rough and and so so at one point yeah so i wanted to turn the cameras off and and brian kind of noticed and was like well i don't want to miss anything Mm. uh and i I was kind of tired and and I didn't want to put up the fight of like we're not gonna miss anything. It, 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 was, it was it was one of those situations like a, where like end of the night scam school and then Brian's like, we got one more episode. Yeah, and it's like and you don't uh, want to tell him no do because we? yeah yeah uh, it no that that was yeah. it and it uh, so ooh, turn everything back on but uh, and it, also I think it, I, it still wasn't I it, I I still feel correct in the assumption that like we could have done with with more targeted right yeah coverage yeah i think i think at some point brian probably underestimated one just the time that it would take to put yeah. that kind of stuff together i also think like he he thinks we were very close i don't think we were still mm. close i think we still had another four hours gotcha uh, left and al- four hours. also i think brian was kind of in the mindset of like you know when we did the the candle burning there was a lot of footage of us just waiting yeah uh but I think I think he he maybe expected a little bit more 
off the cuff reactionary dialogue to crop up. Right. Um, but that didn't, but yeah, like it's, it's just the sort of thing where, where I think, I think he was maybe too close to the project and he had a certain perspective on it mm-hmm. that he couldn't necessarily see the big picture of how the video would be formed. Yeah. And just like, even if you guys got some great footage, the immense undertaking of cutting all of that together. Yeah. The, would and, just be insane. Right. Uh, yeah, and I... It would yeah. be like this week's Scams Club episode. <laughs> yes, where you had an hour long. Yeah. But also, that turned into 20 minutes and not, like, 8 minutes. Right, yeah. Like, at least a, a good portion of that was usable. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, and I, I it kind of made me start to feel a little bad, because I didn't want to be like, I'm not going to pour through 8 hours of footage over 2 cameras, and, like... Uh, at some point I was worried as like I would be saying I don't want to do my job <laughs> uh, which is not true but it's also not doing me any favors of like mm-hmm. having you gotta be mean coverage on all of it. you gotta be mean Bryce it's a, it's like a guilt it's not like a guilt trip but it's a little bit like a guilt trip that it's does. funny when 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 we first when we first took over scam school I remember Brian would tell me a lot like he would he would mention to me like like hey if I'm just like talking too much, tell me to shut up. Like it's it's okay. Really? It's okay to like wow. to like if if something is not working like especially during a scam school shoot, like guide me, like point me in the right direction. Oh. Um huh. which I haven't actually had to do a lot during scam school episodes. Maybe every now and then, especially if one goes on like super long. Yeah. Um but I think I think especially with with like behind the scam like the structure can be so loose sometimes that it does need a little bit more of like honing in yeah like like somebody who can see the overview and say like this is not useful Mm -hmm. um this this should not be done this way kind of thing but a lot of those calls you can make in post yeah i know a lot of that i'm just like you don't need that line you know sure yeah, yeah um uh, yeah, and, and so that was that was a real rough day because I expected to be home before rush hour and and I could do night attack at home, and then it, it turned into uh, doing night attack from the studio and uh, it was just that was a real long day. Uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah, it does happen from time to time. Oh, and then we did the ad after. Oh, okay. Yeah. We did the the food truck ad. Did we do that? Oh, maybe we did that after cord killer. No, no, no. We uh, we did that Tuesday night. It's an important uh, detail. <laughs> yes. Fuck it. Fuck it. Uh, uh, I've got to shoot an ad in the next day or two. Ooh. We'll find ooh. out how that works. We'll see how that goes. I don't have an idea yet. Yeah. Uh, talking about rough days. Yes. Uh, we don't have to go super deep into this, but I did want to mention it because it's a weird. It's interesting. In, I think it's interesting. Yeah, it's a weird thing that happened. We it, we should have brought it up last month, but I totally forgot to put it in the doc. Whatever. Uh, so this happened probably a month and a half ago. Uh-huh. Um, a few scam schools back, we shot a series of scam schools. This was a rough shoot. We shot like eight or nine episodes yeah. of scam school. We tried to. Some of them- which is insane. Yes. Yeah. Um. And, and it was it was at I love the I love the Moon Tower Saloon, but it was outside and it mm-hmm. was July. Was it July? No, no, it was like June or July. Yeah, it was the summer. I like it was rough. Yes, and uh, and some of the episodes kind of went by snappy. Some of the episodes kind of dragged on, especially like once last, we got into the later in the nights. Like those got we, sloppy and yes. messy and just to the point where long. we had to just trash the last one because. I think maybe even two. We uh, we trashed the last one, and then we trashed one because they figured well, it they out. Because they figured out like super instantly. Um, but, but there was one yeah. episode there was that one was episode, already kind of weird. It was a little weird, but like once we got into it, like it was entertaining. People were having a fun time. Yeah, we felt like this is a lock in. This is this so is great. Solid. Yeah, yeah. Especially because uh, that was the same uh, trick that previously they the guys had figured out right that we had to toss so we could yeah. we could salvage all of that footage and it would be mm-hmm. like whoop. like we could we could maybe mix in the failure episode with the winner episode and then we could kind of show like a comparison of hey like don't set up the trick like this because clearly they obviously obvious. figured it out right um 
And so, totally nondescript as we'll to who the who, people were, but they or what their job was. They they worked in the education profession. Really, that's really specific. But sure. And uh, oh, they, like people are gonna go like, mm, I'm gonna track down, I'm gonna track down like the date, and I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna look through my logs, the GPS of my employees. Well, so so they they were there was a a, a little get together, and yeah. so there was a lot of them in, in one group, and they got a lot of in. friendly outing kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So they got pulled into the episode, and they they uh, had a. It seemed like they had a really good time. Yeah. Uh, and they they solve the, the the did they solve it or no they didn't but they almost I don't did. think so uh, and uh, I mean it was great like coming off of it I was like that was, they were really charismatic that's that's what uh, uh, I think is yeah it. we were like wow these people are really funny and they're having a fun time with the thing and like yeah. they're they're blending well with Brian's sense of humor and stuff like that and they're actually pushing Brian a little bit which yeah. is great um, but and, I think. Uh, so as as people uh, in the education profession, you know, sometimes you have to be careful with your image. You yes. have to, you know, you you don't want to you don't want to get if too you have crazy online, or anything. It, it can yeah. become a thing. Like yeah. there's plenty of because you have to uphold a certain standard even in your personal life, or else it could affect your professional life. Sure. Uh, um, and so as a part of Scam School, when you're on Scam School for the first time, mm -hmm. we have you sign uh, a image release. Basically yeah. saying that we can use this episode. We can use the footage that we shot to make Scam School and other shows, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't get editorial say, and like you're saying okay with this, right? Um, uh, so the next day, uh, the 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 people who were on that episode email Brian, and then we didn't get he didn't forward that to us until like a week later, and it really fucked me up. Mm -hmm. um, saying uh, we talked to a lawyer. Right. Uh, and because you at Scam School, we buy you drinks like m sorry to break the movie Magic Bubble, but we buy the drinks. Yeah. And uh, they they were like, we went to a lawyer and uh, because they because we were drinking and because you got us a, a drink, which I don't even know that we bought them drinks like specifically. Yeah. I don't remember that, but uh, they knows? were already a little hammered when they came or came to us. Uh, they were like, we talked to a lawyer, and uh, because we were inebriated, you, that contract is null and void, and we want to see the footage before we give you the okay. Uh, and there was this weird back and forth of like, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna give them any sort of editorial control. Right. We could pump out a raw feed for them to look at, but like, like we're not, we're gonna put work into an episode that they're just gonna be like. Eh, don't release this. Yeah, they wanted to see a final cut of yeah. of what it looked like, and that Which, was not going to happen. And so we ended up just ditching it full stop. Just yeah. like, all right, like this is another one of these episodes tonight that is not going to get not, used. Yeah. Um, and it was just it was so weird because I f I feel like they kind of approached it in the way that a lot of the comments approach us sure. in seeing us Very as reactionary seeing us as like um, corporate overlord scam school is yeah. this company who's out to get you when it's like it's us three or four it's, people and yeah. I mean you could just talk to us and l like we're human beings and like I honestly I mean we're looking out for you we want you to look as good yeah. as possible yes you could look at at scam school and see that like we make people look good yeah uh and admittedly some of their jokes were a little risque and we could have cut down on some of that but yeah. some of that would have had to stay well, in and already the... at the end of that episode or after we finished shooting we even told them that we would cut out what their occupation is yeah but we, we wouldn't say what what they did for a living and they made a lot of vagina jokes uh sure. I think, vagina and penis jokes and it's like you know I guess when you're a teacher, you have to skirt that line or whatever. But sure. uh, like, I feel like if they just wrote a nice email, like we could have worked with them to reassure them. Or even I would have, I would have felt like okay if they just came to us and said, "Hey, sorry guys, like we just don't feel totally comfortable with this episode." Yeah. But like the weird, the they went the, to a lawyer. The fact the that next they day. took it kind of legal and they took it legal fast yeah. just made me feel really uncomfortable. And and I and yeah and I got really worried because like. I did a very cursory Google of like using inebriation to void contracts and like mm -hmm. you have to be fucked up. 
Hmm. You got to be really fucked up for that to happen. Um, but I was worried because, like, if that happens, you know, we might not be able to get releases for anybody because that's kind of the whole show. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Give people drinks. And, sure. and, and uh, it, it was rough. It was, and I got that email. I got that email during a live well, during a stream during while I was live streaming. Mm. And so I was like. I have to deal with this. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, while also trying to be funny, talking about Nintendo or something. Sure. It was it was just such a weird situation all yeah. around, and that's something that usually doesn't happen. And it was kind of strange. Mm-hmm. Travis says, "So the new rule is to try to avoid people that seem a little plastered." I mean, already. Um, mm-hmm. Nah. The new rule is to avoid people who care about their image. Yeah, you know, um, which is not a lot of people. I think. I think with with their occupation that because uh I, I had a friend who very similarly asked me to take down content because he was getting into that profession uh and was like can you take it down and uh it's it's a thing where like someone's name can be there someone finds it someone tweets it and then it's like oh they said penis oh and then the students do it and then it's a thing and then mm-hmm. you know it, it especially with schools it's uh <laughs> it, it it can snowball uh but sunbun i think that's a little too far to say no more humans on scam school i don't know i like the idea uh, just a blank picnic table with like well, text we've talked about an episode that only had brian in it which i think is a hilarious idea where Brian like a POV type thing like he's talking to the camera or just like like Brian is sitting at a table uh. and he is performing <laughs> the trick and then he teaches the trick and that's it okay uh, also like the idea of him sitting at a table and then we do like the 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 comp like split down the middle so Brian's on the left and on the right oh yeah um, so he's teaching himself so, the trick yeah Oh, uh, funny. We we talked about that one night when just like nobody was up for a shoot, and we were like, "Well, do we shoot anything tonight?" Yeah, and I was like, "Just have Brian do all the work. That's fine." We should look into that. It that would actually it might... would be pretty fun. Yeah, it would be a little difficult to coordinate sometimes, but I think it'd be good. Um, Man, but yeah, I mean, generally speaking, we actually do avoid people who we feel is going to be uh, problematic, uh, problematically drunk. We've had people on the show who We've wasted our time being so drunk. I remember there was there was an episode at Moon Tower Saloon where we had two drunk people on, and we had a guest on, oh. and the drunk people were they were kind of fun for a bit, but then when it came to teaching the episode, they were beyond the barrier of being able to comprehensively understand. learn and understand the trick. Yeah. So we really had to like limp them through the end. But then when we cut it together, it looked totally fine. Like you could kind of tell they're drunk because they're slurring the words a bit, but they do the trick. Um, so even, even th- there's a certain level of drunk where we can, we can make it work. But there's a certain level of buzz that we prefer. Yeah. Right. Um, but I, I, I don't know. Like, every episode's different. Every place is different. We use the people who are there, yeah. who we can find. Yeah. Um, I will say, lately, we haven't used so many regulars. That's kind of a nice thing. That Yeah. I mean, not I love the regulars, but, you know, it's nice seeing a lot of new blood. New yeah. blood. Yeah. Um, hopefully... Ooh, we got some ideas for stuff down the line, which hopefully will. I have I have plenty of problems with the Scam School format and a lot of things yes. that are done with Scam School, and hopefully those will be addressed at some point, uh, yeah. sooner than ever. <laughs> well, and I think there is definitely room for that and more. Um, mm. Before I think we got time for maybe one or two topics. Um, uh, that that last one we'll save for another month. Okay, because yeah. that's that's a big topic. That and I think it'd be nice to have John on that. Yeah. Um, so. You know, I it, since we started the show, I've gone on. I've gone from not really touching the podcasts except Cord Killers to having my hands in all of Brian's podcasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Weird things, Cord Killers, Night Attack Now, um, and so we have. I, there's this thing, and I, I don't know. I I, I want to talk to you. I just want to talk out loud a little bit about it. Okay. Um, sure. Uh, at, the, at first, the idea was, uh, you know, on weird things, the guys talk about audiobooks a lot. Like, like they've, they're, they're, it's very clear that like 
that is how Brian reads is that it's through audiobook and yeah. he probably won't read something if it's not on audible. Um, so the idea was what if we got an audible promo code, right? Cause like that seems like a really natural extension mm-hmm. of, of just like, we can make a little bit of money. Um, uh, but, but so before I go, like, w- w- what do you, what's like your temperature check on that? Like, if there was an Audible sponsorship, yeah, kind of thing? for like weird things, that would be totally fine. I mean, like Audible sponsored Game School before, and sure. it seemed like a good fit for Brian because Brian obviously uses the service a lot, yeah, and he's good at like, hey, I, I read a book this morning on Audible, yes. and I read this other book. I'm so smart. I mean, look at these literature books in my ears. I'm Brian Brushwood. Uh, you know, and he, he just does that walking around the house, you know, yeah. and it's not even like on a podcast. So if, if he could get paid to do that in mm-hmm. front of a microphone, uh, all the better. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I kind of floated the idea to uh, Justin and Andrew. Brian was into it. Uh, he knew that the guys had looked into it before, but had never really pulled the trigger on it. And uh, I, I talked to uh, Justin and Andrew at After Weird Things, and uh, the consensus was that they had looked into it. And uh, th- so the way that it works is it's a cost per acquisition advertisement. You know, people use the promo code, and then we get a commission. Okay. Um, problem is with Audible the commission is very small. It's fifteen dollars mm. per uh I think it's per free trial. So someone puts in their credit card and gets the free book. Um, which is not a lot. Uh and there's no extra commission if they turn into a regular subscriber. There's no commission if they keep up their membership. So mm. it's a very tough sale because comparing it to the prices that we charge for like like night attack, that would need you know more than 10 people signing up per ad read uh to even get anywhere close to like what would be our flat rate for night attack um and so that that kind of just at some point you are just giving audible free ad time Mm -hmm. and you won't ever see because then your audience base gets saturated with it and so so that was um that kind of went down the drain but uh the other idea, which got a little bit more positive response, was uh, a straight Amazon affiliate account. Okay. Uh, so you go to you go through the link, and then when you buy and something just on anything Amazon, on Amazon, you get we get a uh, we get a percentage based on what type of items it is. So okay. so some things are a little more percentage than the other. I believe Rage Select uses one of those. Yeah, yeah, um, and I I I I. I think it would be a good fit for Night Attack because those guys would love to have something. Would love to. Ha- I, I think they would have a good time with an advertiser who won't check their ad reads. Hmm. You know, uh, with Squarespace, we had that one hiccup uh, uh, about a month or so last over this month. Yeah, uh, where no, it was last month where uh, the ad read went up before the episode. Brian tweeted out hmm. the ad read, um, but uh, it was just. Uh, over the line for Squarespace where they asked us to cut out the ad on the episode that went out hmm. um, and give them a new ad the next week. Um, and if there was, I think if there were some time where they can still do ad reads, because people do like the ad reads mm-hmm. generally, um, uh, and it can still make money, that would be a good fit for Night Attack. But... I, I, I'm not so sure about where it fits in with weird things, you know, because mm. it's not the natural fit that audible, an audible thing would be. But because right. like if, if you had if you had like an audible code, it could just be a thing where if somebody is in picks, if somebody has an audio book that they listen to, right. they could they you could say, top off the pick by saying, go to. Hey, and if, 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 you, if you also want to get this, you could get free trial using this code and then that could be it. Yeah, and it could just be like real clean and simple and out of the way. Um, but with an Amazon code, then it's then you're taking weird things, which is a podcast, which has always kind of had a weird relationship with advertising. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of fan advertising and stuff. Yeah, uh, which just wasn't. Uh, I think 
it was too 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 much of an administrative time sink for Justin or Andrew to keep up with, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we take something that is a Patreon supported and start saying, you know, hey, also run through our Amazon link, like I feel people might be weird about that if it's in the show. Yeah, I could kind of see that if it's if it's just like, you know, like the Patreon thing feels really uh, decently integrated because it's. You know, it's just it's it's a part of the structure of the show. Yeah. Uh, and I I feel like Patreon has kind of uh, cultivated uh, 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 an image over 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 time that it doesn't it doesn't feel like somebody's you know pestering you to give them money. They're just right. saying like, this is how we're supported. It's kind of standard fare. Yeah. Um, Especially something like Night Attack, which launched. Because of Patreon. Right, yeah. And has become, like, a, a staple of Patreon to some degree. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, like, the, 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 like, the Amazon thing maybe feels a little tacked on. But also, it's, I mean, the nice thing about that is the sort of thing where if you can kind of get the word out and let people know that it's there, it's a really nice thing to just have in the background. Yeah. Right? It's something that can be on the website. It's something that can just like mm. exist, and it can. It's you wouldn't expect it to be your primary source of income, but it's a little. It's a little. Someone extra will tip. think like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um. So that's. But yeah, it is. It is kind of a tricky balance. It's. It's a tr- Okay. I. I wasn't sure if maybe I was just rationalizing it too much, and, uh, I. At least I'm in a good headspace on that. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's. Uh, uh, do you, do you want to wrap up with this this one last one here? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so, how how's the new place working out? It's great. I have seen. It's so great. Uh, I saw that you guys went to IKEA, or Roberto yeah. was telling me you guys went to IKEA the other day. Yes. Uh, how was that? Uh, it was decent. Decent. Uh, oh. It's it's a little out of the way. Uh, it is. Yeah. Especially up, up for around rock. rock. Yeah. yeah. Um. But, you know, it was kind of fun to walk through. I I went there specifically to check out a desk I was looking at, which mm-hmm. I think I'm going to get. Yeah. Um, and it's a nice desk. It's a tiny bit smaller than I expected, but it was nice to see it in person before I made the purchase, just so I know what I'm expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and while I was there, I checked out some stuff. So I think, I think I've decided on a couch that I'm going to get. Oh, nice. Um, I think I've decided on the desk that I'm going to get. Good. And I think I've decided on... I, I've got a nightstand that I want. I'm not 100% decided on a bed frame. Mm-hmm. But I did get my mattress in today. Oh, good. Yes. That's great. You got uh, one of those Casper or the Lisa things? I got a Lisa. A Lisa. And there's a there's a photo oh, in the chat. And uh, it came in the... Oh, wow. It came... So it came in... Uh, that's This box is stuffed a little tighter than... I it was heavy. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, I'm so glad they didn't leave that at the front office because I live on the third floor. Oh, man. And I have to imagine that was not fun to get up all of those floors. No, man. It was hard enough to get it in the door because I was just like, this is like 80. I mean, it's still a mattress. It's, yeah, still... it's like 80 pounds. It's like, this is kind of heavy. 80 pounds? I think it's it might be 75. But yeah, it's it's heavy. I guess it's because it's got that. It, this is like a, a, a foamy sort of thing, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. Because I I get, I have a I have a spring mattress, and so that's lighter. Okay. Because it's not as dense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. Whew. Yeah, uh, but that was a fun experience. So tonight, I think I'm gonna go maybe to Kohl's or something and get some some sheets because all of my sheets are for a, uh, a full like a, mattress. And, oh, okay. And I bought a queen. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, Kohl's, Kohl's uh, Target has uh, um, like T-shirt okay. fabric uh, uh, um, sheets hmm. that you might like. Yeah, I, I might just I might just I might just kind of uh, limp through with my with my current sheets and just kind of use them not totally fitted around it, mm-hmm. uh, and then go buy sheets in the next day or two once I kind of look around a bit. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, those I really it, it was weird because my dad was like. My my dad's always trying to find like the 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 cheapest solution for me because he knows you know I'm not, I'm not making a billion dollars out here, right. uh, but I'm good at saving up so I've got a little bit of money to spare from the past few years, mm-hmm. uh, and so you know for my desk he was like, 
you should just you should just go get this fold out table from Walmart. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I could do that, and that would be like twenty, thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. But then, but then one, it wouldn't be a very good desk. Once I get a real desk, then I got this table. I'm like, what am yeah. I gonna do with that? Uh, and so bed, he was like, you know, you could get you could get like an all right bed for way cheaper than Lisa, which is very true. Yeah, uh, you can get yeah probably. Uh, but for me, it was just like, I don't even I don't even I don't even know why. <laughs> nothing else was a viable alternative to me other than Lisa and Casper. Mm. Like, I just really like that a company is shipping out mattresses in the mail. I think that's hilarious and awesome. Yeah. Um, and the, all the reviews I've seen are that they're fantastic mattresses and they're, they're really fairly cheap for what kind of mattress they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so for me, I'm just like, this This cuts out all like the haggling, the weird haggling of mattresses that you get like in a mattress store of like, hmm, I don't, I don't, I don't know if this is right for me. Yeah. Can you, can you give me a little bit of what you don't have time to watch the system? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then also just like, I, my dad mentioned mattressfirm.com. So I pulled it up and I was just like, Oh, oh, there are so many choices, and they're they're all like I don't feel comfortable with any of this. Mm-mm. And then you know you go to Lisa or Casper, and it's like, and it's like model. you could choose your size. Yeah, and I was like, well, I could wrap my mind around size, but well, and the other thing is that uh, it's a foam, not like your dad was talking about cheaper foam or cheaper beds, and those are going to be spring, right? Yeah, mattresses uh, where foam is usually like considered like I I I. I assume that foam is considered like a step up, just I like think across so. the board. Yes, uh, because it's cooler and it f- shapes better to the body and right. X, Y, and Z. Uh, so at at some point, it's a little more it's more expensive than a spring mattress, but it's also that much nicer. I Theoretically, guess. yeah. So hopefully, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so hopefully, yeah. hopefully, I'll order all of, all of my IKEA furniture in the next couple of days. I think I'm just gonna get it shipped in because it looks like it's a flat rate delivery uh, payment. Mm-hmm. Because when when I, I I put in my desk in the checkout, I was like, oh well, they didn't have it at the store when we went, right? Which is why I didn't get it then. Uh, so what would it take to have it delivered to me? And it was like a hundred bucks, and I was like, well, that's uh, that's more expensive than I expected. I expected lie. like sixty bucks. But man. well, it's because you didn't pick it yourself. They charge you for picking it too at the store. Hmm? Like if you go to the store and say, "I want you to deliver that to my house," it's like sixty bucks. What? Yeah, that's, that's insane. what I was telling you. Yeah, it's cheaper. that's insane. Nah. When you go online and you say, "I want this, deliver this to me," yeah. it's the same exact pockets. But it, but yeah, yes, it just saves me a thirty-minute drive. Thirty <laughs> minutes or forty dollars. That's insane. Yeah. Anyway, so I thought, okay, hundred dollars. That's kind of ridiculous. But let me see what it would be if I just but added other stuff. hundred dollars is if you get ever, if you get multiple yeah. things. So, so that's not so, so bad. Yeah. So I started adding in like, throw a couch in there, throw a nightstand in, there, throw yeah. a mattress, in there, throw whatever in there, and it's all hundred dollars. So okay. I'm like, that's all right. It. So yeah. I'm gonna hold off. Until I got all my shit laid out, okay. and then I'm gonna be like, "Yeah, just bring it to my door." Like, <laughs> that's great. You should see about getting your couch put together for you. Yeah, I watched the guy put my couch together, and that was a process. I'm glad I wasn't a part of, because mm-hmm. he'll put them in the cushions. He'll put the cushions in the covers and everything, and like he'll do all the ratcheting and mm-hmm. all that stuff. I don't want to fuck with any of that. Yeah, maybe. Do you think I'd get a discount if I say? And just put all this stuff together. Just like you're already here. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. I mean, you could probably talk to the guy, right? <laughs> because if that's the case, then maybe I will. Yeah. Just like, hey, you want to build you know, my apartment for me? <laughs> you know, dust's probably not so bad. Right. To put together, you know. You just gotta like put the legs in, put the top on. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I am also dealing. I have a apartment date. Apartment update. No, I actually don't. Uh, the apartment update is that I need to find a place to live. Right. So you're coming up on the lease soon. Yeah. Uh, less than a month now. But I honestly didn't. I don't want to start any of this stuff until Dragon Con is done. Hmm. Because when I when I first moved down here, I was with Roberto for two weeks. I found a place on Thursday and signed it on Friday. Like, and then I moved in on Monday or something like that. Wow. Um, uh, 
what's going to take the longest time to do is pack and I can do that on my own time. Uh, but finding a place, I'm not too worried. Hmm. Uh, that was the thing I was most worried about for yeah. sure. Well, I went to an apartment hunter last time and I, I don't know if I should go to the same place cause they found me the apartment way up North and they're located up near me. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if they really do you, cause it's like one company owns all these different businesses that are named different things, but they all do the same thing. Right. Um, and I, th- I don't know if it would be better to go to somewhere that is down South, which is where I'm looking. Uh, instead hmm. uh, so that's that's the but I, I I guess by this time next month I will have to be moved into the new place um, I definitely did get a call from the uh, from the office last week I was like hey we know you signed your intent to not renew your lease do you want it keep <laughs> doing that because uh, I think my feeling is that they have a lot of empty rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I told them no. Uh, and they were like, well. If you change your mind. Why? No, she was like, well, why? why? Or have you, or no, have you signed a new place yet? And I told her I hadn't. And she asked where I was looking or asked why I was moving. And I told her it was for work. Uh, and she was like, well, where do you work? <laughs> uh, and I was like, uh, out near fucking Dripping Springs, whatever. And she's like, oh, okay, bye. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> like she did. Oh, that was a, that was okay, a tree. Yeah. She didn't want to be parking up. Yeah. But I could tell she was either trying to pitch me on another complex that the company that owns them owned, mm-hmm. or to get me to stay on the lease because the the apartment I'm the unit I'm in is like not on paper. It's one of the least attractive models, right? Hmm. Like it gets no natural sunlight. It's next to all the AC units. Right. Uh, it's the parking is shitty. It's right next to the stinky dumpster. Um, but, uh, that was like everything I needed. I needed a trash can to throw myself into and I needed no sunlight because I like a dark, and, yep. you know, perfect. Oh, oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, but you know, even, even if I was going to stay up North, like they wanted to bring the price way too high. Ah, um, Sunbun uh, mentions, well, now he's buying a Casper. Yeah. Great. I will say, if you go with Elisa, I can give you a referral code. <laughs> what do you get for the referral code? Do you get like 50 bucks or something? 50 bucks. Okay. That's and bad. they get 75 bucks off, which is the standard um, discount. Wow, nice. Although, I got 90 bucks off. Ooh. Military discount. Oh, oh. shit. Because no. uh, of all my time in the service. <laughs> yes. Thank you for your service. Uh, thank you. Country. Yep. Uh, shit, Veterans man. Day is for me. I am. I uh I don't have my military ID anymore. Mm. But I think they probably expired like ten years ago. But I definitely had a military ID and like I now can, I could really take reap the benefits of that. I guess I sort of did too back when I lived on base. Mm. But uh I just used my dad's. Because oh. my dad was like <laughs> He just kept it. doing that for ten minutes. <laughs> but he did it over text, which was weird, and it was like <laughs> Um, a bit moji, yeah. But are you hey, a bit moji? You you make the you make the decision. Whatever is best for you. Yeah. Uh, no, I never really got into bit moji. I know Carboni uses it a lot. Yeah. Um, it's just a little too, it's a little too silly for me. Mm. Yeah. It's like I'm just now coming to terms with uh, regular emoji. Yeah, regular emoji. <laughs> really. Yeah. Okay. Like, I didn't use regular emoji until, like, six months ago. Mm-mm-mm. And then I was like, okay, this is all right. Like, sunglass face, that's that's a proper emoji. Uh, but, you know, like, there's a lot of emoji I'm still not on board with. Yeah. But, but it's okay in, in certain circumstances. Um, Brian has called me three times now. So, I think we are, it's also, like, 20 to 6. So, we have to end the Bizarre Roofing now. Uh, thank you, everybody, for checking out the show. Uh, if you want to subscribe, go to neshcom.com slash TBB. Uh, you got the RSS links there. Brant's on Twitter at Gatawag, G-A-T-O-W-A-G. Yep. Uh, I'm at Brad Casby, R-Y-C-A-S. John's at, at John Tilton, J-O-N-T-I-L-T-O-N. Still on hiatus. Still on hiatus. But if you've got an issue with the scam stuff thing, uh, scamstuffstore at gmail.com. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Just go ahead and move into Bell Hill Country. Oh, God. Fucking no. It's a proper establishment. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs>